So how do I describe this product other than saying it's like the literal worst product I have tried in a really long time? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a splurge or save. I haven't done one of these in a while, but I really enjoy doing them because as you know, I focus mainly on drugstore and more affordable makeup here on my channel, but I do love a splurge every once in a while and trying out some high-end products. But as drugstore has gotten better and better, I find that most of the time I'm a little bit let down or disappointed with some of the high-end things that I buy. So these videos are a great way to figure out whether it's worth it to spend Spend the extra money or if there are drugstore options that do pretty much the same thing. So today I have some high-end makeup that I recently purchased at Ulta and we're gonna find out did I completely waste my money on these or are they actually really good and something more unique or something that you can't find for less? So let's start out first with this product from Stila and Stila is a brand that I actually haven't had much experience with. I don't know why, maybe it's because they don't release a ton of stuff all the time, or maybe it's just because they are not as hyped and I don't hear about them, so I don't really think about it. But when I was looking in Ulta's new release section, they had this product, it's called the Tinted Moisturizer Skin Balm. And it sounded really, really cool. It's actually a tinted moisturizer, or at least it's supposed to be, in a compact that you can just kind of swirl your brush in and put it all over your face. And I thought that's such a quick and easy way to put on a tinted moisturizer. And I am super into those these days, the lighter coverage thing. So let's go ahead and just take a closer look at this really quickly and I'll tell you the claims. So it claims to have sheer to medium coverage with a natural sheen. It has antioxidants, vitamins C and E and natural oils to hydrate. And it's also fragrance free. It comes in eight shades. I have shade number two, now three of those shades are light and then three are supposed to be for like a medium to tan and then two are supposed to be for deeper skin tones and honestly guys it's a really bad shade range and I know companies always defend it by saying well this is supposed to be a sheer formula and your natural skin is gonna peek through so you can kind of get away with it and each shade will fit into multiple different skin tones and that actually brings me to my next point which is this is so sheer it might as well not have any color to it at all. <laughs> Let me show you quickly um, me swatching it on my hand. And what I'm doing is just picking up a bunch of the product on my finger, much more than I would with a fluffy brush. This is a lot more concentrated. And when I apply it, you can see a tiny bit of color at first, but then when you blend it into the skin, it pretty much just disappears. Now also in the ingredient list is a bunch of different waxes, and that's basically what it feels. It just feels like you're kind of spreading a waxy base onto your skin. And it actually reminds me a lot of this Makeup Revolution super dewy blurring balm that I got recently. This is basically just kind of a primer in a compact or you can use this to pat on top of your foundation to seal everything in. Similar to the product also from Mali Beauty if you've seen that one. This has no color to it but like I said neither does this really even though it's supposed to. So you might as well just save your money and buy something like this if you're looking for like a primer balm in a compact because that's basically what this is. It says you can build it up but I actually tried to do that and it still did not cover anything not even a little bit of redness like nothing and I went to Ulta to look at the reviews because when I originally bought it there were no reviews and now it has about two stars there was like one or two people who said they liked it and everybody else said it was bad. So um, I would avoid this one at all costs. It sounds like a really good idea in theory to have a tinted moisturizer in a compact, but until somebody comes out with a better option, I will definitely just be using my regular tinted moisturizers. So that being said, if you're in the market for something that does what this claimed to do and give you sheer to medium coverage with a little bit of dewiness, I highly recommend the Neutrogena Hydro Boost hydrating tint or the new wet and wild tinted hydrator this one is really nice as well this is a little bit more on the sheer side this one is kind of like sheer to medium it has actually quite a bit more coverage than you would expect from a tinted moisturizer so if you're just looking for that really light bit of coverage i would check out the neutrogena one if you'd like a little bit more try this one out these are both great options all right so next up we have the buxom white russian palette and they actually developed a whole collection around their white russian lip gloss which is really kind of famous iconic product that I have never actually tried until now but I did purchase it for this video we're gonna try it out and see if it's actually worth the hype but um, the palette I thought looked super beautiful I love that it's a face palette I haven't seen a face palette come out in a while that I really thought was so beautiful 
beautiful. And yes, it is very basic and boring and neutral, but I just thought the rosy toned shades looked so pretty. I love these two blush colors, and I've also been really wanting to try Buxom's Primer Infused Blushes, and that's what's in here, as well as Primer Infused Eyeshadow. So they're supposed to be a little bit more long lasting. So anyway, now that I've had a chance to try it, I do have some thoughts. First of all, I think the formula on it is pretty good. Um, the matte shades, I didn't find them to be chalky at all, at least on my skin tone, but keep in mind, this is a very light palette overall. I think somebody with a deeper skin tone may have some issues with these shades, just not working well for them. But on me, I thought the matte shades showed up well. They blended well. The shimmer shades are very creamy and buttery and showed up also very well. They weren't like um, crumbly or, you know, glittery or anything. I think they were really smooth, so that's a good thing. But the other thing I wanted to mention about this palette too is that I think it's a little bit limited in the different looks you can get with it. On the back, it it actually has suggestions. I don't know if you guys can even see this because it's really, really light, but on the back they have suggestions as to where to put these shades. So they're basically saying you have a brow bone highlight, an inner corner shade, a lid shade, a crease color, a lower lash line smudger, and then one for the upper lash line, which is the deepest shade. And so, um, you know, you don't have to use it like that, but I found that to be pretty accurate as far as what I could use these colors for. I didn't even use the brow bone highlight at all. I usually don't use that shade. Um, and then the one that is basically the only one you could use for your crease if you wanna use a matte is this one. And this was, I would say, the perfect crease color for me, if not maybe a little bit on the lighter side. So anybody with a deeper skin tone than I have would probably find this to not show up very well as a crease color and then you have this really really dark matte shade down here it actually has micro glitter in it as well not a lot when you put it on your eye it actually just looks matte but they are in there just to let you know and I thought that this is too dark it's almost a black shade and again black shades kind of like the ivory one are ones that I don't use very often so what I would have done is probably put one like this or maybe just a hair lighter than this one um, instead of this ivory shade and then put one that's a little bit deeper of a crease color like a nice mid-tone brown or pinkish brown in place of this one and that way those with like a fair to light skin tone could always use the lighter one for their crease people with a deeper skin tone could use the deeper matte for their crease or the mid-tone and then you just have more options and I would have swapped out this darker almost black shade for maybe like a rich espresso brown to put in my outer corner and again I just feel like they would be a little bit more versatile if we had some different shades I think that the shimmer shades in here are beautiful though um, this one which they're saying is an inner corner highlight looks a little bit more on the satiny side. This one, which I'm wearing on my lid today, is really nice and shimmery, but it's not over the top metallic. It's not flaky. It's really smooth. And then this one down here, Smoke Show, is actually what I'm wearing on my outer corner instead of this dark one because I just, even though it's a shimmer shade, it worked out pretty well. I felt like this would blend with the lighter eye look better than this, which is like almost black. I just felt like it was too stark of a contrast. So you know, they're saying to use this as a liner, but I really wish they had something matte for the outer corner. But I have to say, you know, the shimmer shade worked fine for it anyway, and I think it looks good, but I feel like this is kind of the only look I can get out of this palette. I do think it's pretty limited, but on the positive side, these shadows are very, very long lasting. I got an entire day's worth out of them when I was going to bed at night. It looked really good still and had hardly faded at all. So I do think these are nice long lasting shadows, but let's go ahead and get into some swatches you guys know I will always do comparisons on every palette that I get and we'll see if maybe you have something already like this in your collection so let's start out with the first comparison and that is with the Lorac unzipped palette this is actually the first one that I thought of when I saw this buxom one and it really is quite similar I do think that the matte crease color in the Lorac palette has more of a pinkish undertone and I think it's like kind of suits the vibe of the palette a little bit better um, and even though the color looks pinkish in the pan of the Buxom palette, it swatches more brown, which I was a little disappointed with. Also, I do prefer the deep warm brown that's all the way to the left side of your screen in the Lorac palette, and that's what I would have put in the Buxom palette probably instead of that black shade. 
Next up, we have the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette, and this one just has so many neutrals, I was positive that I would find some matches in here. And sure enough, this one was actually pretty much spot on in terms of the shades. So if you already have Bare Necessities, then you have the Buxom palette and then some, minus the blushes, of course. So if having those in the palette is a plus for you, especially when we start to travel again, I think that the Buxom palette would be a great, like travel friendly, neutral palette, kind of smaller version of the Bare Necessities palette, because you also get the blushes in there as well. Next, I also thought about Soft Glam. I wasn't really sure that these would be a perfect match for each other because Soft Glam is a little bit deeper. And I think other than the two deeper shades on the left-hand side of your screen, I really didn't think this one was a very good match. I couldn't really get any of the shades to line up perfectly. So this one I wouldn't say is close at all. Um, next up, we have the Clay Play 2 from Tarte, and I thought of this one right away, especially because it's also a face palette and it has those blushes in there as well. And this one surprisingly wasn't as close as I thought it would be once I swatched it out. The blushes on the left-hand side of your screen are actually very close, but the other shades had kind of different undertones or just were completely different colors. So I wouldn't necessarily call this one a dupe either. So the bottom line is, I'm sure you probably have a lot of very similar palettes to this in your collection. Those were the only comparisons I did, but I'm sure there are tons more just because these are neutrals that are really easy to find in a lot of different palettes. So, you know, if you have any palette that has those pinky brown shades, you probably have something like this already. And if you don't, or if you like the fact that it has the blushes in there too, I do think again, that this would make a really good travel palette once we are able to actually travel again. <laughs> so that is definitely something to keep in mind as well. The next product I could not wait to try out as soon as I saw these hit the Ulta website are the NARS Air Matte Blushes. So these are described as a unique mousse blush that transforms into a velvety powder for a weightless cloud-like wash of cheek color. I got mine in the shade Freedom. They do have an orgasm version, which I didn't end up getting because I just thought that the Freedom shade looked so beautiful. And this is described as a mauve, but to be honest with you, I think of mauve as having more of like a dustier, like pink undertone or like a purpley pink undertone. And this to me just looks like a really warm toned pink. It's really beautiful, but I don't think I would necessarily call this mauve or mauve. So it has this really fluffy whipped texture that actually reminds me a lot of the L'Oreal Studio Secrets primer that I love so much. It has that really primer-like feel to it, and it's just really fluffy and beautiful, and it sits on your skin really well too. And as soon as I saw this, it reminded me a lot of the e.l.f. Putty Blush as far as the packaging goes. I do think the NARS one is much more luxurious. It has a glass jar versus plastic. It also has kind of like um the rubberized texture, like the soft touch on the cap, and the e.l.f. one is just like a smooth plastic thing. So I definitely give the points to NARS for the packaging. I think it's beautiful, but I thought It'd be interesting to just compare these two kind of go head to head with them because the elf is so much cheaper at the end of the day and they have very similar claims and I also found that the shade Tahiti in elf looks almost identical to the NARS it's a really close dupe so let's see how they swatch side by side first and I'll also show application so when I went to swatch the NARS one first I thought that it didn't exactly swatch very smoothly it kind of all grabbed in one spot and I really had to work to kind of smooth it out it does again have that really like almost cushiony primer like texture and, and then in comparison when I went to swatch the elf one it just went on so smoothly just in one swipe and I was really kind of taken aback by that I wasn't expecting one so much cheaper to actually swatch better but of course swatching isn't everything so let's see how they applied actually to my cheeks so starting with the NARS one I felt like this one actually went on pigmented right away I only needed a little bit and a little went a very long way with it so I didn't feel like I had to build it up at least on my skin tone um, and this was good news because I don't find that these dry down quite as quickly as the elf ones they do dry down after about 30 seconds or a minute so they're not something that's gonna stay sticky for very long and I think if you're gonna apply another layer I would wait until it sets down first because Otherwise, it tends to kind of grab to itself and then lifts up the layer underneath. So I would definitely give it a few minutes, maybe just make sure it's totally dry when you feel it and then put on another layer. The e.l.f. 
one by comparison it doesn't feel quite as fluffy it feels very emollient and kind of slick when you pick it up at first but as I blended it on my cheek it dries down immediately and I felt like this one went on a bit more sheer than the NARS so I tried to add another layer and that basically got it to look exactly the same and because these dry down to a powder finish pretty much as soon as you put them on your cheeks there's no issues with building these up at all you can definitely do that I also did a wear test with these the other day with the NARS on one cheek and the e.l.f. on the other and by the end of the night they basically still both look the same so I think they both have great staying power um, but you know is the NARS one worth $30 for one blush when the e.l.f. one is so much cheaper and it lasts just as long and even though it's a little bit more sheer it can be built up just put another layer on and it's basically the same thing you know I don't know there's another option too the Milani cheek kiss cream blush in the shade nude kiss also is a very close dupe for this particular color freedom from nars so i'll show you what that looks like really quick in a swatch and this one i feel like has the exact same texture as the elf it goes on the same way it completely dries down like the minute you put it on your skin so yeah i think with these two amazing drugstore options it kind of for me at least doesn't make sense i kind of feel like i wasted my money on this i do like that kind of fluffy whip texture it's a little interesting but the end result on your cheeks is exactly the same so i don't know if just you know the pleasure of using this or staring at this beautiful glass jar really makes that much of a difference for me at the end of the day all right guys so now let's talk about this buxom full-on lip cream in the shade white russian this amazingly magical shade and formula that people have been talking about for years and years and i must have been missing out on so this retails for 21 dollars. and to be honest with you i have trouble spending 21 dollars on a lip gloss because i've never really tried a high-end formula that i felt like did something super spectacular that was so much different from lip glosses at the drugstore it's one of those things things that the drugstore options are perfectly fine I think they're all well and good lip gloss doesn't last a long time on your lips it wears off no matter whether you spent $30 on it or $5 so I think that's why I've slept on this one for so long but I just figured I was getting the palette I might as well try it out I had some Ulta points but the claims on this one say that it is a high shine medium coverage lip gloss that drenches lips in ultra flattering nude pink color the lush formula is packed with plumping peptides moisturizing vitamins a and e and hyaluronic spheres that fill and smooth for a soft sexy pout so this formula does have a little bit of a tingle when you first put it on definitely not my favorite thing but it's not one of those burning stinging kind of lip plumpers and I don't even think that the tingle is really supposed to do anything it's just a menthol derivative that's in here so it gives you kind of that icy cool sort of feeling but it's not something that's actually going to like increase your lip volume I think the hyaluronic filling spheres and the peptides in the formula are supposed to do that more than anything and that's something that usually happens more over time and with constant use versus like right away so let's take a look at what this looks like on and you know because they said it's like an ultra flattering color on everybody to be honest with you I didn't really like it I thought that it completely washed me out it looked a little bit weird um, just wearing it by itself I felt like um, you know I'd probably rather wear a clear gloss than something that's like this baby pink that almost kind of shows up white on my lips and it just to me was anything but ultra flattering I felt like I wanted to take it off immediately so I am wearing it now but I'm wearing it on top of my Koki rose lip liner just because I wanted to give my lips a little bit of extra color before I put this on and then when I did put it on I put on a very light layer so you know I'm not really seeing the hype with this one either and I do have some drugstore alternatives that I like a little bit better so the first one is the Milani keep it full lip plumper and this one has the exact same menthol derivative in it so it feels very similar on the lips and this is also the first one I thought of after trying the buxom because it has that same feel and it also has peptides in the formula for that longer term plumping and I wasn't able to find an exact shade match for the white Russian but I think the shade pink quartz comes really really close another one and probably my favorite option is the Maybelline lifter lip gloss 
gloss. Now this one doesn't have the menthol in it, so it doesn't have the tingle and you may actually prefer that. I do because this one has more of like a vanilla scent, so it doesn't have that mintiness to it. It does have hyaluronic acid, which the Buxom one also has. So it's supposed to kind of smooth out and plump up your lips over time as you wear it and it's also supposed to be very hydrating which it definitely is and I think that the shade Moon while again not an exact dupe is very very close to white Russian it has that little bit of pink tint to it so overall did I waste my money on all of these products I kind of think I did I didn't intend this to be a negative video it kind of turned out that way because I just, every time I tried something, I could think of immediately something that was a lot less money that did basically the same thing. So again, I'm not trying to be like a negative Nancy and bash high-end products because there are plenty of them that I really, really love, but I do think, like I said in the beginning of the video, that they have to be something a little bit more special to really warrant the price tag. And it just so happens that the couple things that I tried in this video really warrant. So, you know, sometimes that's just the way it goes. But anyway, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below on all of these products. If you've tried them, what your thoughts are on them. I always love chatting with you guys. And also thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate it so, so much. If you haven't subscribed, to my channel yet don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go and i will see you all in my next one take care guys bye